one of my dear online art buddies, Noobsy Jo, and her wife, uh, Erdin, Erdin, <laughs> has been teasing us about creating her own business selling her art and handmade watercolor paints. Apparently, Germany has a strange protocol where employees have to approve of their employee's side business or something like that. So that did prolong the opening of their store, Doenken. I'm so sorry, I butchered that so bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm really bad at languages and I can tell you my German is limited. <laughs> But as soon as it opened, I snagged all but one color and unfortunately that was my favorite one too. One day, Swamp will be mine, I swear. <laughs> I actually got a little too excited and opened the packaging straight away, but then I thought that I should probably film it since Itzy and handmade orders tend to have a more personalized um, feeling than big companies. Unfortunately, there was nothing too special about it, but I know the store is new and it just opened so they could possibly be trying to figure something out maybe in the future. I hope it does because from the Instagram of the store, I can see the two of them adding and preparing new items and improvements, so i love to see them grow. Apart from the paints, there were pieces of watercolor paper for our swatches, a little note that came handy soon, and the business card and receipt. And as much as I love receiving paints that have swatches already, which is kind of in a way like a handwritten note but with colors, I much prefer to do them myself in my own layout. So I was pretty happy that the swatch cards were empty. These paints were wrapped in these brown paper thing. I, I know there's a word for it, but I don't actually know what it is because it's not quite common here. It's like a grease paper, I guess. They have a smooth lining on the inside so the paints don't stick too much to it. And honestly, it felt like opening candy. <laughs> little homemade caramels and each paint did have a mini label on them to show what color they are except for one. It was a surprise color that was sneakily included to say thank you. I was so excited to find that in the hole. <laughs> I wrapped them and placed them on the swatch card one by one to remind me what color the pan is, but I ended up forgetting and mixed them up anyways. <laughs> they even had the names written on the bottom, but I still managed to get confused. <laughs> there were two colors that were way overfilled, and I couldn't get the wrapper off them without using the freezer trick on the note. Hey Doki, so... <laughs> I'm, I purchased a black version of this from eBay, but it never came, but that's okay, I'll just use this one. Cute little blue one. It usually holds about 12 pounds, well it's meant to hold about 12 pounds, but I can easily fit about 20 into the small pan. So that's gonna be fun. I'm just wondering whether to put them in the order that they came in or to change it to the order that I want, so... Maybe I might do the swatching first. But if I do the swatching, the paint will be wet and stick to my finger. Hmm. <laughs> I got these paints in the middle of summer, so the heat and humidity most likely caused the runniness. I'm actually surprised that it was only 2 out of the 15 and not all of them. I still ended up getting paint everywhere, of course. <laughs> I think I might put that one there because the transparent palette, I mean transparent pans are actually a bit thicker than the wet ones. And I don't want it to go everywhere on any of the paints. Okay, let me clean my hand and we'll do swatches. 
The swatches here don't do the paints any justice. They are a lot more vibrant than this, but they need water to sit on them for a bit to soften them up. And also the black ink that was on the swatch card kind of repelled pigments off, so I couldn't really tell how opaque the paints were. But being handmade, this is a high chance that these paints do end up quite opaque. So in the end, I did my own swatches <laughs> in my own style and layout. The special thank you paint was pearlescent pink. It is a little bit similar to Krenakadum pink and has a really subtle sparkle to it. The pink does overpower the sparkle. That means I can still use the paint for normal paintings without it being too overpowering or shininess. Oh, and these paints use clove oil as a preservative to prolong these paints and prevent mold from growing. I've used clothes for baking before, but never the oil for anything, so after playing with these paints, my room definitely smelled like a warm kitchen full of loving yummy goodies. <laughs> Daddy, <what are> you <laughs> Sorry, my dog was trying to get up on my chair and he fell. <laughs> So yeah, it, my room smelled really, really, really comforting, which is really, really much needed for the upcoming cold winter weather. And now I'm hungry. <laughs> and the best part was the pan only cost three euros or three dollar fifty USD. I've never seen handmade paints this inexpensive, especially with the shipping costs, which I had to question Oopsie about to see if Etsy calculated properly because it was so cheap. Alright, so mixing. With all the colors that Doen Kin has, I chose these colors to be the trend. I'm able to make a beautiful green and purple out of them. Orange is nice, but it's a little slightly dull, at least to me. Nafno? Nafno? Red is kind of unique in a way. It's definitely a bright red, but I can see it leaning a little bit to the cooler side. I would really love to see Noobsy and Wifey add a warmer red and a cooler yellow in the future to their product list. And then I will be one happy girl. <laughs> because with those two additional colors, I can mix just about any color I want while still having a lineup of beautiful earthy neutral that granulates and behaves so uniquely, like Little Emo does. I love that name. <laughs> oh, and the neutral that the triad did make was beautiful. I love the black that it created. It definitely had some attitude and personality. So this is a big mixing chart with all the color combinations of two paints. The paint that is being mixed goes diagonally down the page. Oh, and I can definitely feel some texture with these dry swatches. It's not chalky but it does feel similar to chalky from my experience and knowledge of handmade paints which isn't much <laughs> this is one of the properties that these type of paints do have and it is most likely caused by having larger particles of pigments which result in beautiful granulation higher opacity and better ease of lifting since the bigger pigments sit on top of the page instead of being absorbed. And I decided to draw a whale for the speed painting. Why? Well, if I remember correctly, there was a conversation that Noobsy had that she mentioned that a conversation about whales was what she and her wife bonded over and I thought that was incredibly cute. <laughs> I did have an issue with this ACEO of how crazy little emo granulated, which didn't suit the smoothness of a whale. I knew that from the start and I still did it because I had so much blue happening on the ACEO and a blue whale would just blend in with the rest of the sea. I did use this palette for mermaid. I got sick of mermaids after May and I couldn't bring myself to draw another one after the challenge. <laughs> The other mistake was being lazy about the markings that I painted in the titanium buff color Titan Titan Deox Natural? Natural? I'm not sure if that's German or not. It's just one of those times where I wish I had masking fluid because going over the areas with little emo made the black super blotchy so I had to go over the tiny circles. Well I didn't have to, I, it was just easier. Good thing 
this buff titanium color was very opaque. Yeah, so I enjoyed using these doughy kitten paints in the last month and a bit. Handmade paints do require a bit of an acquired taste, but if you're interested, then I've listed the links below for Noopsy, her wife, and their store. But with that, thank you for watching. Until next time, happy painting and bye!